The purpose of this video is to talk about some of the properties of polynomial functions and more specifically discuss all of these terms that you see over here. In a previous video we talked about a leading coefficient so you might already know what that is and as well as what the degree is but we'll talk about how to find the maximum number of zeros in a function, the number of real zeros, the whether or not the function is considered odd or even, and then the end behavior, what is going on at the ends of our function. Now, I will tell you right now, you're probably going to need a graphing calculator to really benefit from this video, so hopefully you have one. And since I can't put the fancy graphs up, you're going to have to deal with my hand-drawn approximations of what the functions we're going to be working with are. So, with that said, let's jump into some of the properties of three different polynomial functions. Alright, so here we have our first function with this x cubed plus 2. And over here you see my lovely approximate graph. If you type this into your calculator, you're going to see something very similar to what is over here. And some of these we don't need the graph for. We can just look at what our function is and answer them, such as the leading coefficient. Now remember, we talked about that in the last video. The leading coefficient is the coefficient in front of the highest exponent, or exponent to the highest power. And since there's nothing in front of this x to the third, our leading coefficient is 1. And that's not a good color for there, so let's use the magenta. So leading coefficient is 1. Now the last video definitely talked about degrees. That was one of the main points. So look at our function. What is the highest exponent? Up, oh, it happens to be 3. So our degree is 3. The maximum number of zeros that we could have in a function is equal to the highest degree. So if we know the degree, we also know the maximum number of zeros. Since this is the exponent to the third power, and it's to the third degree, our maximum number of zeros is also 3. Now, what does that mean in terms of the graph? Okay, so over here, a 0 is any time the graph, the line in yellow, crosses the x-axis. We consider that to be a 0 of the function, because the y value is 0 when it's crossing the x-axis. So anytime you have a third degree polynomial, you could have three zeros, because we have a three up here. Now the next one says, though, the number of real zeros. That's where we need our graph for. The number of real zeros is how many times does the function actually cross the x-axis. The maximum number is how many times it could the real zeros is how many times it actually does. So if we look at this yellow line, we hopefully notice, oh, right here, let me highlight that in green, right here, it crosses the x-axis, giving us our one and only zero. Now, does that mean that there are only one real zero? Yes, only one real zero but we could also have two imaginary zeros or complex, but we're not going to be talking about those. So the number of real zeros is just one. Odd or even. This is based off of the degree. So is the degree odd or even? Three is an odd number, so it is odd. And we could also base that off of how the graph looks. The fact that the graph on one end goes down to negative infinity and the graph on the other end goes up to positive infinity, negative infinity and positive infinity, implies that we are having an odd degree. If it was even, it would look different, and we'll see that in another example. So the end behavior what do we want for the end behavior? As we see, the end goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. So our end behavior here will just be negative infinity, whoops, to positive infinity. 
So that's what we'll say for our negative, or sorry, for our end behavior. Because if we're looking at this, we see how this end is going all the way down. It's never going to come back up. This end is going all the way up. It's never going to come back down. So there's how we can handle these. Now let's try a couple more just to make sure we're getting the hang of it. Alright, here we have 2x to the 4th minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 3, and my lovely picture of what it would look like on our graphing calculators over here. Looking at our function, we can figure out our leading coefficient and degree right away. The leading coefficient, remember, is the coefficient on the variable with the highest exponent power, so it's 2. Our degree is the highest exponent, which is 4. And that matches our maximum number of zeros, which is also 4. But we have to look for the graph for the number of real zeros. And as you can tell here, there's only two spots, right here and right here, where the function crosses the x-axis. So our maximum number of real zeros is only 2. And look at our exponent here. It's a 4. Is this odd or even? Well, 4 is an even number, so we will have to say that this is even. And finally, for our end behavior, look what's happening. Over here, it's going all the way up to positive infinity. And here, it's also going all the way up to positive infinity. And this is a characteristic of a polynomial function that is even they are going to point in the same direction, either both pointing up or both pointing down. Okay, so what does that tell us about the end behavior? It tells us as x approaches negative infinity, as x keeps going this way, we're going to reach positive infinity. So let me write that out on here. As x approaches negative infinity, the function f of x approaches negative infinity, and then the opposite is true. Whoops, sorry, I made a mistake there. It does not approach negative infinity, it approaches positive infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, so as x keeps going this way, the function is also going to approach positive infinity. So that's our end behavior. Everything is going towards positive infinity. Now, what if they gave us the graph, but they didn't give us this? Could we still handle some of these? Let's find out. So here we have this graph. All we know about it is how it looks. We don't know the function itself. And we need to decide what of these could we actually answer? Well, the end behavior is probably an easy one to start off with, because look at our ends. This one's going towards positive infinity. This one's going towards negative infinity. So we can say how as x approaches infinity, the function approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches positive infinity. So we can still take care of our end behavior if we're just given the graph. And from the end behavior, we can also determine, is this odd or even? Because look at our end behaviors. Are they both going in the same direction, or are they going in opposite directions? Let's put an arrow there. If they are going in opposite directions, it has to be an odd function instead of an even function. So since these are going in one direction to positive infinity and one direction to negative infinity, we can say this is odd. We can also figure out the number of real zeros based on the graph. I can tell that the graph crosses the x-axis here, here, and here. So I know there are three real zeros, but I can't figure out the maximum number of zeros because as we saw before, 
the maximum number of zeros is based off the degree. And while we might know what the real numbers are, there could be more imaginary zeros we don't know about. So we cannot figure out the maximum number of zeros, which means we don't know the degree. And you probably could have guessed this to start with. We can't figure out the leading coefficient either just by looking at the graph. So if all we're given is a picture of the graph, we can figure out the number of real zeros where it crosses the x-axis. We can determine if it's odd or even based on how the ends of the function are pointing. Remember, even both point in the same direction. Odds, they point in different directions. And from that we can tell our end behavior. Now one other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is how, let's say we aren't paying attention to the end behavior, we can still figure out if it is odd or even based on the number of real zeros there are. So in our function here, I have three real zeros, so it still has to be an odd function, because three is an odd number. Anytime the function is odd, you are going to have an odd number of real zeros, be it one, three, five, seven, whatever. Any time the function is even, you will have an even number of zeros. Which, we should probably look at one special example. Let's say the function looks like this. Okay, if we notice, this function is never crossing the x-axis based on how it's drawn. It's just continuously going this left to right. So is it odd or even if there are no real zeros? The answer to that is it is still even. Because just as we say if it has an even number of real zeros, it's even. If there are no real zeros, it's also considered even. Well, there you have it. We can figure out some properties of our polynomials just by looking at the graphs and as well as by looking at the functions if we are given them. Hope that helps and good luck.